does a couple of inches really matter all that much? Uh, on second thought, please don't answer that comment down below. We went from the phoenix of legendary creature of fire to the swift to the harrier and now the seagull. Caw. Yeah, I don't pretend to understand it either. Disclosure! This was sent to me by outofdarts.com for the purpose of not only making this video, but to let you know that if you pre-order this blaster before it releases in October, you can get a bunch of really cool stuff that we'll talk about as I go over the blaster. The folks at Out of Darts are of course friends of mine, but that doesn't affect my opinion on the blaster and no money was exchanged hands, so my opinions are completely my own. Uh, they do get bonus points for sending me the pink one though. This comes in five fantastically delicious colors. Uh, pink being my absolute favorite. And for those of you unaware, this is of course a pump action, magazine fed, short dart shooting nerf blaster that hits some pretty high velocities compared to standard stock nerf. But if you already got yourself like the, the worker harrier, uh, you may not really care too much about this video, but if you were thinking about getting a worker harrier, but don't really need to hit those 300, 350 feet per second velocities that the harrier can do, well then, uh, do I have a blaster to tell you about? Wait, you guys aren't the worker seagull. This is a remarkably compact blaster because I mean, just look at it. It's. It's amazing. Starting off with a stock here, or lack thereof, unless you want to call this thing a stock, this is a completely new part from Worker. With one screw, you can remove the entire thing and reveal a buffer tube that will take any buffer tube stock, like the one from the Worker Harrier. But this little piece keeps it nice and compact, and uh, you would think that would be absolutely off, but it is a... Uh, it is surprisingly usable and good. To remove any of the screws on this blaster, you simply use this Allen key stored right here, and this will disassemble your entire worker seagull. Moving to the grip, we got the same nice rubberized grip, this beautiful flat pullback metal trigger. We got this trigger guard here that is also a piece of metal, and this heel piece right here that is metal and also has a sling loop on it. It is uh, kind of similar to the one that comes with the Harrier, although I, I tried to take this one off and it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. But with the removal of that knuckle guard, you can now, I mean, even with my small hands, effortlessly manipulate the mag release with one hand. Speaking of the magazine, new design. It's still a similar talon layout that you've come to know and love, and but it's slightly curved and looks really cool and has this really nice matte texture on it. There, it's, it's really good. The capacity written on the magazine is 15. Excuse me, miss, are you aware they named a blaster after you? The, the new worker seagull? They come in five delicious, fun colors like purple, green, white, pink, and uh, oh, I, I, I guess I guess you already knew. You've got a Picatinny rail that you could attach any Picatinny foregrip to, which will act as your priming bar. This little short guy is a new design from Worker themselves. Uh, it is very compact. I find it really comfortable. But let's quickly dip into one of the negatives with this blaster because just like with the Worker Harrier, when you prime the blaster and you let go, the foregrip will spring load forward. And out of the box, this thing uh, really rubbed against the barrel. Hopefully you can kind of see that. I actually had to sand this barrel down a little bit to get it smooth again. So I just removed that spring and it works fantastic and it's much lighter to prime. Speaking of barrels, the blaster does come stock with two options, a short boy and an even shorter boy, and a plastic worker rifled muzzle to put on the end of this to impart some spindier dart and increase your accuracy. And it is compatible with all of the worker Harrier barrels. Ah, oh, oh, oh yeah, this, 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 this is fantastic. And if you pre-order the Worker Seagull from outofdarts.com, you do get a couple of extra bonuses, starting with the metal rails you see on the side of the blaster. Those are optional parts that you will get for free if you pre-order. Also, this beautiful metal top rail that goes along the entire top of the blaster. If you don't pre-order, you won't get that for free. You will have to buy it separately. And finally, these beautiful back 
and front fiber optic sights that are really cool and I really like them. That is also an optional part you would have to buy separately, but if you pre-order the blaster before it ships in October, you will get all of that stuff included with your blaster in the box. Using the trusty included mouse katool, this one Allen key will take apart this entire blaster. And to separate the front and back halves of the blaster or to put it together out of the box, these two screws need to be removed. However, if you have the metal rail on there, there's two additional screws that are locked in that you'll also probably have to remove. And if you have the sight on the front of it, that's another screw you have to remove. So this will be anywhere from a two to five screw removal in order to take apart your blaster and service literally everything. Just take out this one, take out that one, remove the little guy that's hiding underneath our front sight, and then free it from these two screws right here in the side. All in all, it's a process that only takes about a minute or two, even if you have all five screws attached. Pull the front grip down, remove your magazine, and it will pop right apart. And this is how you can access pretty much everything on this blaster. Excuse me, sir, are you the new worker seagull? Sir? Man, this is, this is really deep. So some shared parts with the worker Harrier. The uh, plunger rod and everything is completely identical. Technically, the plunger tube is the same diameter, it's just a lot shorter, so there's gonna be less air volume. The blaster does come with two spring options in the box, a short boy and a not so short boy, and a combination between these two springs and those two barrels will give you anywhere from about 140 to about 200 FPS, or feet per second, out of the box. These are very similar to the Worker Harrier springs, and there's no doubt in my mind you could shove a Worker Harrier spring in there and potentially do some insane stuff hitting far above 200 FPS, but noticeably, these have like heat shrink tubing over the end of them. I guess that prevents the spring from binding so much. One of the cool compatibilities between the two is the worker bearing pull down part. I went ahead and slapped one of those in there and uh, you'll see how easy this thing is to truly prime in a second, even with that stronger spring. That covers the blaster, so let's take it over to Freddy and see exactly how hard it's hitting. Do you know about the new worker seagull? Oh, oh really? And he's gone. It's fall now, and you know how it goes. As the daylight dwindles, you start running out of time and energy to do important things like cook food. And not only does today's sponsor Factor help you save time on cooking and get delicious food on top of that, but you can even save a ton of money. Factor is a service that delivers fresh, never frozen, pre-cooked meals directly to your doorstep. You go to factor75.com, you look through their meal plans, you can even choose specific diets if you're into one of those. Choose from over 30 different meals every week, have them delivered straight to your door, and if you use code WALCOMS50, you can save 50% off your first box. Oh, and cooking them? Here's the best part, you basically don't. You grab the factor meal, you poke holes in the lid, you chuck it in the microwave, or in the oven if you have a little bit of class, and in around three minutes you have a delicious and yet nutritious meal. My first taste of Factor was this queso jalapeno chicken breast with riced cauliflower, and it was uh, the best thing I've ever taken out of a microwave to eat. That That is for sure. And it's not just dinner. You can get a variety of breakfast and lunch options for whatever meal you happen to be lacking. And Factor is now owned by HelloFresh. That means not only a wider array of meal options, but between HelloFresh and Factor, you may never need to go to the store ever again. Head on over to factor75.com or click the link down below and use code WALCOMS50 to save 50% off your first order. Go on, just go to factor75.com and look through what meals they have. I bet you'll find something worth your time. Thanks again to Factor75 for sponsoring this video and please use that code and that link down below so you can help the channel and get me more delicious and nutritious food. We need a tool that will help us objectively compare multiple different blasters together using the same ammo type, and that's what a chronograph is, and that's what Freddy is. Freddy measures the velocity of things in feet per second, or FPS. Your bog standard nerf blaster will hit about 70 FPS with full length darts. This is going to hit much harder than that. and I just killed the heck out of Freddy. First six shots with the shorter spring and the shorter barrel. 168.3, 154.6, 159 even, 161.6, 141.4, and 145 even. Not the most consistent thing. 
Although Freddy did just hit his head pretty hard. Next up, shorter spring, longer barrel. 162.2, one 201.2, 155.5, 144.8, 172.7. I'm getting flashbacks from when I reviewed the worker Harrier and my chronograph numbers were all over the place. Why is that? Switching off the shorter spring for the longer spring. 189.8, 186.8, 188.3, 188-even, 163.7, and 190. That is really good for what is basically a pinky prime. And in the shortest possible configuration. And now the slightly longer, slightly less compact velocities. 203.3, and 192.7. All right, the indoor range has changed a little bit. I had a lot of help from Zach, Milo, Russell, and Eli in building this whole new setup, and it will be evolving in a couple of weeks. But we've got a digital target down there, closer to the bullseye, higher the score. So let's see exactly what we can do with the Worker Seagull, using Worker heavyweight darts and the included fiber optic sights. Round two. Seventy five. Switching to the longer barrel here during test number three, the darts were kind of going random directions, so I want to see if switching to a longer barrel will fix that. 78, all righty. So overall about 10, 15% of those shots felt a little random, but it did seem reasonably accurate from my experience. Yeah, so obviously the Seagull doesn't hit as hard as the Harrier. While I do believe it can hit far harder than the Velocity as I've shown here, especially with Worker Harrier springs and barrel combos and you know, that might destroy your blaster, but it's worth it for science. The Seagull wasn't really designed to do that. What was the Seagull really meant for is the fact that, well, it's more of a competitive grade blaster. Now, I, I'm gonna do a whole entire video on this because it's starting to get a little out of hand, but you don't need a 300 or 400 FPS blaster in order to play. I mean, lots of people are under the impression that they could just buy the strongest blaster out there and use it in every war ever, and that is not even remotely close to the truth. If you attend a game and their FPS cap is 150, well, uh, you can't use anything above 150, and they will have a chronograph on site most of the time to check your blaster and make sure it hits under that. And if both the Seagull and the Harrier can hit about 150 FPS, but the Seagull is remarkably shorter, keep in mind I have the longer barrel on this now, so it's hitting close to 200, then yeah, that's kind of worth it to some people, especially those who play competitive. Not to mention a short prime that is still ridiculously light. All these things are minor changes from the longer worker Harrier, but to a competitive player, that matters more. The real problem here is that the worker Harrier can also hit like 150 to 200 FPS, which means if you already bought a Worker Harrier, chances are you have no need for a Worker Seagull. That puts us in a really weird situation where the Seagull could potentially just be cannibalizing sales that the Harrier would have gotten, which is a bold business move from Worker. Let's see how this plays out. There is another blaster that not only myself thought, but a lot of people thought this was supposed to be competing against, and that is the Unicorn. This is where I would show you my Unicorn. If I had one, 
However, my friend Bleed does have a unicorn and a video on said unicorn. And even he said it's, uh, the unicorn's almost a bit too short because it's actually more compact than the seagull. Yeah, it could use a few inches. And when a guy like that is complaining about length, I just have to trust them. But the unicorn has slam fire. Uh, not exactly a super important thing to have, but it is really nice, especially if you have a smooth, short prime, because you could really just hold down the trigger and just dump magazines. The Seagull doesn't do that, but if you didn't need that feature nor want that feature, that could be a good thing. The Worker Seagull gets really high recommendations from me for pretty much everything besides the name. Why is it called a Seagull? You're a bird! But if you already have a worker harrier, you don't really need to pay attention to this one too much. And I am gonna repeat one more time, you should really go to outofdarts.com and pre-order one if you're interested in this blaster at all, so you can get the metal side rails, metal top rail, and the iron sights for free, making an already good deal even greater.